Hello everyone, Pedro here at Cinemeld talking to you today about an important update on our Ronin 2 upper tilt arm extension, specifically the stage one extension. One of the things we pride ourselves here at Cinemeld is that we are constantly improving our products. If a customer gives us feedback on a new feature that we can implement on the next batch, then we'll absolutely do that. So I'm not on set as much as I used to be, but you guys certainly are. And while I was already working on this update, uh, a couple of you guys called me with a, a new issue that you guys are having, and this developed essentially another use for this update. So the update is in essence, a really simple change. All we've really done is we've added three 3816 threaded holes running vertically from the top as far as up, was up as we can get it down. But there's basically three main things that I've initially identified that you can use these new uh, 3816 holes for. So to start off with, everything that you see in this video, I'm gonna be selling as a lens support kit or a upper support kit. And so you might have some of our Houdini clamps already, you might have 38 rigging rod already, but if you don't, we will be making these and selling them as a kit. In the last couple of years, a lot of you guys out there have been flying increasingly much bigger payloads on the Ronin 2. So this is what kind of started me off on this concept of starting to address some of the issues that come up when you start mounting larger and larger cameras on the Ronin 2. So this is just the first uh, modification. Any sort of stiffness and structure that you can add to the camera cage might even help you add a little bit more stiffness to your settings. So let's go over how this works. We have three vertical positions on the tilt extension, and this is because cameras are gonna be different heights, and that's with the upper cross plate right here, the bridge plate, it's gonna expose, maybe the, it's gonna leave the upper hole exposed like it did on, it did on mine. Uh, if your camera is uh, shorter, all the holes will be exposed. So just pick a hole that's exposed. There's three options. Um, thread in the sort of short starter 3 8 rigging rod, and then we slide in this longer 3 8 rigging rod. So down here at the lens, we have an interesting situation. We have the 3 8 rigging rod, and then we have our iris rod. So one of the really interesting things about our Houdini 360 clamps is that they are completely interchangeable with all the other sizes. So that means you can go from speed rail to 5 8 rigging rod, you can go from speed rail to 3 8 rigging rod, or in this case, you can go from 3 8 rigging rod to 5 8 So what you're gonna need is this 360 Houdini clamp that has 3 8 on one side and 5 8 on the other. And there you have it. Just get it roughly in position. Just snug it up, no need to tighten it yet. Get it everything balanced. Once everything is in the final balanced position, then get it nice and tight. Now you're Ronin 2, even with a long heavy lens with three lens motors on here, with the big map box with three filters in it, has an additional bracing to support it. So that brings me to another option here with this lens support situation. So right here you see me going to the lower iris rods. So with this Sigma lens, as well as many others, I can actually put a lens support bracket on the top of the lens. And so what that means, I can take that same support bracket, put it up here. Uh, if you're using our Cinemilled Ronin 2 upper dovetail, you can actually put an iris rod mount right on the end of it and run iris rods on top. And then that means you can actually run this support rod to the top of the lens if you want. If you're not running Cinetape, we have a 3816 thread on the end of the upper pro dovetail, the Cinemilled upper pro dovetail right there. And so what that allow you to do is you can then run from here to the back of the camera. You can run from here down. You can use this as a mounting point for a number of, of different things and uh, you know, or keep supporting things or you know, your imagination is the limit. So one of the other things that occurred to me that now that I have a 3816 mounting point on my tilt arm is that I could thread in counterweights right into the tilt extension. So here's our one inch counterweight. You can put another one on the other side to make it equal. You can put the different sizes. Now you might ask yourself, why would you wanna do that? So one reason is to change the top and bottom balance of your cradle. 
maybe you've reached a limit on the, there's a travel limit on this cage. Maybe you've reached that limit. And so this allows you to add weight to the extreme end of, uh, to the extreme end of the tilt cage, getting the camera nodal and doing 360 spins on these gimbals can be very tricky depending on the build that you have on the camera. So having this new option to put counterweights on the tilt arm is an interesting option that you can now explore. So the final thing I wanted to point out today on how you can use this new modification that we've made to the upper tilt arm extension is the following. A lot of you have written to me, have called me, uh, some of you freaking out because you have rented out your Ronin 2 and someone has incredibly lost your upper bridge. And as you can see here, there is a ton of flex in the cage. And so you absolutely always have to run a upper anchor point on the camera. So what do you do? So what we've come up with is a way to sort of synthesize, to sort of replicate what this bridge does by using 3 8 rigging rod, our anchor points, and our 360 Houdini clamps. Now, before I show you how to actually put this together and give you a demonstration on how that actually plays out, I just want to remind you, even if you didn't lose this piece, the other reason why you may want to replicate this sort of setup is on some film cameras. Yes, a lot of you out there have been shooting on film cameras. I've seen 235s. I've seen a 435. Uh, on a Ronin 2 and a 416, of course, which is pretty easy. So by using these rods and rigging points and the 360 Houdinis, that might allow you on an oddly shaped camera, like a film camera, to still give yourself a upper anchor point for the camera and thereby giving you proper support and strength so you can tune the gimbal the way it needs to be tuned for especially in those large payloads you absolutely need to have that upper support because you're gonna to need to dial up strength and stiffness and all that good stuff. As you can see, while our customers have used both of our upper tilt arm extensions in order to increase the height of the cage, it's actually not attached to anything if you look really closely. That's because most of the available mounting points are actually forward of where the camera ended up being balanced. And if you look closely, you'll see that the film magazine is actually in the way. And so there's actually nothing you could attach the upper bridge plate to. So if you had our new tilt arm extensions, you could then run 3 8 rigging rod down to each side of the camera, thereby supporting the camera from the top and the bottom, just like you're supposed to. Additionally, you can even run lens support. So this now easily becomes the preferred way to mount a 235, a 435, or really any oddly shaped payload inside of the Ronin 2. So let's get into how the hell you would ever replicate this piece. You start off with two of these short uh, starters, I would call them, um, and you're going to want to put it on the upper mounting point. We have two 360 Houdini, 3 8 uh, rigging Houdinis right here. So you want to slide those on, and then you're going to take uh, a 3 8 starter Houdini, uh, and basically you can just slide that in there. And you're going to want to leave this one just snug and a little loose. Why? Of course, because you need to slide the camera back and forth to balance it. The same way you have this dovetail piece that slides back and forth on the dovetail. So, you know, unlock the dovetail and slide the camera back and forth. And you'll see when you slide the camera back and forth, the 360 Houdinis just pivot and allow you to do that and essentially get find your balance point. Once you found your balance point, you can lock that in there. And there you have it. We have successfully reproduced what the upper bridge plate does. From here, if you wanted to, you can still run down to the lens, right? You can run up to the top of the lens if you wanted to add an additional brace point. This can be a flag, it can be a light, you know, because you now have 3 8 rigging rod running in a few different places on your gimbal you can now run this off to teleprompter, uh, some sort of light out front. Maybe they want to angle it up from the, from the top or something like that. I mean, now that you have 3 8 rigging rod running on your Ronin, you can kind of use it and just, you know, erect your set like we do when you're rigging on a bicycle or something. 
and do, I don't know, whatever you, whatever you need to do. Anyways, it's a small little change. We just added some 3816 holes on there. But as you can see, it allows you to do a lot of different things and it might solve a critical problem from you on set. All right, so if you have any comments, if you have any questions regarding this, make sure to put it in the comment section below and I do my best to reply. Uh, sometimes it's best to join the Cinemill Users Facebook group because uh, someone else might have the answer to your question and they might actually reply to you before I get a chance to, so that is a great resource. And you know, other than that, just make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on some of the great content we're putting out, like Tip Tuesday, and we're doing angles, and we're doing a few other ones, and hopefully some other really cool things coming in the future. And so that's pretty much it. I'll see you on the next one.